So we've completed our steel conduit exercise and we're now ready to test it. We have two switches, two wade, controlling both lights. So these two switches when turned on or off will illuminate both light fittings at the same time. We're gonna carry out a continuity test at all points in the circuit, recording the highest reading wherever that is. We're also gonna complete the polarity test by operating the switches as we go through the circuit itself. We're once again going to use our QTEC adapter to make sure we get to the furthest point of the skirted baton lamp holders in each case. I've shown you previously how to set this up and no doubt at this point in the video I've probably cut now so you can see how I set this up. So the QTEC adapter that we're going to use in order to get to the furthest point of our bayonet cap lamp holder now on our steel conduit job comes in a set of five and obviously you've got to choose the appropriate end for the bayonet cap itself and we can see now we've got two terminals. We're only going to need to probe into one of those for this test so we're going to need to pick up the switching line. It won't matter which one we choose. If we choose the wrong one we can either move the probe across or we can turn it round in order that we get the other terminal. However, as always, we need to remove the resistance of anything in circuit before carrying our continuity test. So if we set our mega MFT up as usual to ohms, and as always on our one, it's in the orange scale itself. I'm going to use a slightly older tip this time. So I've gone back to a tip that I used on an insulation resistance testing video that I did before, more tip exposure. These devices don't allow us to plug in with the adapter like so we're trying to interface a QTEC device with an, a mega device and they don't quite work. The throw isn't long enough here to make the pin itself. So to overcome that problem, I'm gonna use this style of probe, acceptable for the test, there's no issues with it. So I'm gonna probe it into one of the adapters and then I'm going to probe onto the other end in order that I can work out whether I have a circuit. I have some resistance there that needs to be removed. So let's do that again. So Hold it on, and I've got some resistance. Press the test button once, and I've got zero, it's not flashing, so therefore I've moved, removed the resistance now of this QTEC device that will allow me to get to the furthest point. I will confirm that my link is not broken, and I've got a reading of 0 0.03. I'm not gonna remove that resistance, I'm gonna leave that tiny bit in. The circuit we've got is so phenomenally short, every tiny little bit of extra resistance for us will help. So I'm not gonna remove that resistance this time, but I've removed the resistance that was quite high in the QTEC device that allows us to get to the furthest point on our baton lamp holder. We're now ready to use this kit in order to carry out the continuity of CPC and polarity test of our steel conduit lighting circuit. So with all the resistance removed, we're ready to get on with the test itself. So we're gonna insert it into the baton lamp holder. Our link is in place as always between our line conductor and in this case our earth bar. I haven't disconnected the CPC, I've just left it connected. We've removed the resistance of our leads. We've connected to the furthest point of the lighting circuit in this case. At this point, we're gonna move forward uh, to the furthest point physically in circuit on the second part of the test. So I'm gonna prove in the back of the fitting where the CPC is connected that we have a connection to earth. I've got a reading of 0.12. Operate the switch, goes off. Operate the switch, comes back on. Operate the first switch again. Operate the second switch. Comes on and off. So we've proved polarity at this point. However, I want to prove that not only the plastic light fitting gets a connection to the CPC, that the back of the box does and the conduit itself. So I'm gonna probe into the back of the box, have a reading of 0 0.1. I could operate the switches again now, but I'm not going to. And I'm gonna probe onto the conduit itself. 0.12 of an ohm. So I've proved the CPC gets to the fitting, the back box and the conduit at the lighting point itself. So now I'm gonna to move to the second lighting point on circuit where possibly the reading will be higher because we are further away at this stage. So once again, I've probed onto the CPC connection in the back of the skirted baton lamp holder and I have a reading of, I've got now 0.2 of an ohm, so it's increased. I am further away from the distribution board, so I've got a higher reading. Once again, I need to operate the switches. Goes off, comes back on, off, on. And we can see it doesn't matter which switch I operate, that we have 
the switching mechanism working for polarity. So we're going to need to leave it in the on position. I'm going to prove the back of the box has a CPC connection. It does. Again, I could operate the switches, but I'm not going to. And the conduit itself. And at all times, I remember in the highest reading that I've achieved at this stage. So I've proved that both lights come on and off as part of my polarity test. I'm remembering to leave the switches in the on position. I now only need to prove a CPC gets down to the switches themselves. Disconnect. Then I need to re zero this. Okay, I need to re-zero my leads before now testing up the switches themselves. So picking up a line connection at the switch and the metal work, we have a reading of 0 0.12. I've gone to the actual metal fitting itself, 0 0.12, and I'm probably going to go on the conduit as well, 0 0.09, proving that the CPC gets to the, the frame, the conduit, and what is effectively the earthing terminal in reverse there where the brass connection is, the earth is connected on the other side of that. So it's where the CPC is connected to that earth terminal. Move to the next switch. Once again, pick up a line, the earth terminal where the CPC is connected, the actual chassis and the steel conduit itself. And we've proved a circuit protective conductor gets down to the switch and is earthing all the exposed conductive parts there as well. We're now ready to carry out the insulation resistance test, so all my covers have got to go back on, and then we can carry out that test. Must make sure that our loads don't go back in because they will need to be removed for the insulation resistance test itself. So just to uh, confirm, we've proved the CPC gets to the lighting point itself, gets a lighting point here as well, that it comes on and off during the polarity test, and we left it on, ready for the insulation resistance test. We proved the CPC also gets down to the switches itself, and we've proved in several cases that we get to the exposed conductive part being the metal boxes and the steel conduit. Let's get ready for the insulation resistance test next. So the continuity of CPC and polarity test has been finished. We're in a position now we're ready to carry out our insulation resistance test. Our earthing conductor has been connected to the greater mass of earth through the supply authority's earth connection. Must remember before carrying out the insulation resistance test that we've removed all loads. So in this case, somebody's popped some lamps in for me so that they need to be removed and that we turn off any sensitive electronic devices, in this case, the RCCB. So that needs to be off and the circuit breaker needs to be off. And now we're ready to carry out the insulation resistance test from inside the consumer's unit. Both switches have been left on, all loads have been removed. And in this case, the electronic device has been isolated. We're now ready to carry out the insulation resistance test. So we're ready to set up our mega MFT in order to carry out our insulation resistance test. We set it to the red scale, and in this case at 500 volts DC for a 230 volt single phase installation. We're gonna short the leads together to prove that they're not damaged or become disconnected. Should have zero, zero, zero. So we've got a dead short on our leads when connected together. So we're now ready to carry out the insulation resistance test. Clip onto the earth bar, no particular order. Top of the circuit breaker, press and hold my test button. I've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. I'll go between the earth and neutral bars. I've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. I'll move the crocodile clip across and attempt to connect it. So we turn between the neutral bar and the top of the circuit breaker where the line's connected greater than 999 mega ohms. Must remember now, we've got two-way switching of our two lights, so we need to walk back into the installation, throw both switches, goes off, go to the other switch, goes on. We've now got the other strapper in circuit, and we repeat the insulation resistance test again before suggesting to our lecturer that we've completed the test on this circuit. So let's go again. So neutral and earth bars greater than 999 mega ohms. Line and neutral greater than 999 mega ohms. Move across and to the top of the line between the earth bar and line greater than 999 mega ohms. At this stage, we can say that we've completed the insulation resistance test of our two way switching control in two lights having done the insulation resistance test with both strappers in, so we've done it twice. Hope this video has been some help.